was going to touch on the pussy thing. I was going to say that, my, in my opinion, it's not like a purely black and white thing. Like, meaning, like, it's not either, like, you're a pussy or you're the man. I think there's different, like, shades of that. And I think that you can kind of almost level up on the shades by, like, <laughs> well, because like, it's not like this guy's, you know, whatever, level 10 pussy or this guy's level 7 pussy. Level 5 pussy. Extreme. You have a dude that you have hair because I'm not an extreme pussy anymore. I'm just mostly a pussy. You're like, <laughs> I mean, I, just, I mean, I used to be a level ten pussy. Now I'm a level seven pussy. I mean, I mean, binary in the sense that like, like, do they respect you? Like, like, would they like sleep with you? Like, are they like very attracted to you? It's it's still a threshold thing. Yeah, but like, I'm looking at it. Yeah, I agree. There's it's a sliding scale, um, but is it? Is it like enough of a factor to like fuck you over in most cases? That's why that's what I mean by the binary thing. Like a guy that's like a great like game, you know, tactician or whatever. It means literally nothing if he's like meek and and like really beta and like a pushover and stuff like that. Like no hot uh, chicks gonna want to bang him no matter how how tight his game is. What do you think? Someone who's who's watching this and is like, oh shit, I'm meek. I'm uh, I'm beta. What do you think they can do to change that? Um, I tell guys, and I, I said that the past two Sopot summits, I'm like, I'm like, raise your hand if you think you're a pussy, and, and I and I was like, I bet mo- I, I I can assure you, most of you are. You're just like a, you're just like in denial. <laughs> and I like had a dude like stand up. <laughs> I remember, I was like, you're I was like, you're clearly a pussy, and and it turns out he was like a, a graduate of a social prime immersion, which is even funnier. This is like the end end product. He's probably more of a pussy than he started, but uh, and like confused and stuff like this as well. Um, but I tell them like, first of all, start being assertive, like like talk louder, like maintain eye contact better, like stand up for yourself, be more assertive, possibly like take martial arts, like start going to the gym. Um, just like it's not going to be like an overnight process, but. The guy has to has to um, like just stop stop being meek, stop being push short. Like, it's funny because the topic of my Facebook Live today in my mastermind group was how to be more dominant in alpha. And I told I told dudes I have two videos on not being a pussy. I was like, watch these two videos, and then also watch this video on boundaries. So you can't be a pussy. You have to have boundaries, and then never be kissing the girl's ass or anyone's ass for that matter. It's your rules. Your like. It's you have to be like in control. Like you're leading, you know, men. You're leading women. Like it's your rules all the time, and you don't ever want to be like playing by the girls' girls' rules or, or kissing her ass, or what I what I well, the point I kept making as I thought about things more during throughout that live. I was thinking too many guys are rewarding bad behavior. It comes down to like classical conditioning. So like B. F. Skinner, it's like reward and punishment mystery says in his book he has a model he says you do a compliance test if she complies you give an indicator of interest in ioi if she does not comply you give an indicator of disinterest and then you go back up and dhv more and then do another compliance test but that's like the whole fucking cycle well the problem is is it gets to a compliance test the chick does not comply or the chick pulls some kind of bullshit or some kind of game or some kind of disrespect and then the dude says, "Oh, I don't want to start a confrontation, or I don't want to lose this hot girl, so I'm gonna get, I'm gonna reward her for this, or I'm gonna act like it didn't happen." And then it backfires, and she says, "This guy's a pussy, or this guy's a pushover, or I just lost all retra- all attraction for this guy. I can treat him like shit. He doesn't even care." And then he's fucked. So, be a, don't be a pussy. Be assertive. Uh, have boundaries. Speak louder. Have stronger eye contact. Um, try to like fucking lead things and take charge. It's tough though because like some dudes, you know, like you just look at them and they're, and they're kind of like hopeless in a sense. Well, I think I think there's two things that a guy who's watching this and they're like they identify as this like. <laughs> if uh, you're watching this, you are hopeless. They like secretly raise their hand like I'm actually a pussy. I think there's two things that that guy has to realize. The first thing is that. Women are not biologically, or anyone's not going to be biologically attracted to a guy who's a pussy, a guy who has no personal boundaries, a guy who has no respect for himself, a guy who's a pushover. Like you just have to realize that that behavior is extremely unattractive to women, and it will always lead to you 
not being successful. And if you do manage to hook up with a girl, her not staying with you or her disrespecting you. And also same thing will apply to a lesser extent with your friends, your family, like everyone. So that, that's the first part of it. Like realize yeah. that this is something that's not good. And the second part of it, like don't delude yourself to thinking, well, I'm just a nice guy. You know, you can be still a really nice person and have boundaries and be alpha. Like I generally think of myself as more or less a nice person, like within limits, but like, like I, I'm not a pussy. I think the second part of it is also, and I, and I think all the recent science supports this, is that your personality is malleable. So like you can change who you are over time with enough, with enough effort. So like brain chemistry is malleable. Like you're not just stuck with what you have now. You could be a pussy at this very moment, but that does not mean that you have to be a pussy a year from now. Like you can slowly start to shift yourself. I think that for example, like let's do an extreme analogy. Take a guy who's like a giant pussy. Well, most likely, 99% of the time, that guy is like either really skinny or out of shape. But take that guy, give him a proper workout, and he actually follows through with it. He puts on 50 pounds of muscle. He's just going to feel like maybe 70% less like a pussy because when he looks in the mirror, he doesn't see like a skinny weakling. He sees like, oh, like I have muscle. Like I was able to accomplish this. So, you know, like I must, you know, be worth of something. Like if you just start to shift that guy in the right direction with the right actions, like that guy could be in a situation, for example, where a girl is disrespecting him and part of all of, he mostly just wants to like, just let it go, let it slide. But like part of him knows that the right action is to step up for himself. Like not in an aggressive way, not, not in like a fuck you way, but like, Hey, like I actually don't really appreciate you like treating me like that. Like that's not cool. And if you do that again, we're done. Like being able to step up for himself, that's going to, he does that. He's going to feel like immediately like, relieved afterwards like wow that felt great and that starts to shift his like paradigm and his like internals in a sense like all right like yeah i I can be the guy that steps up for himself i can be the guy that you know like leads interactions i can be the guy that makes things happen so i think that those two things just like just because you're a pussy today doesn't mean you have to be a pussy tomorrow as important as that sounds yeah and yeah in like a a relatable sense i remember when i was telling explaining to guys is reward and punishment it's so like, say you, I've never had a pet, but say you had like a fucking dog or something and it went and shit on the rug and you're like, here's a treat, right? And then it like, and then it like went and like pissed on your fucking, you know, bed sheet or say you're like pillow or something like that. And you're like, good dog, right? Like that, that's essentially what's happening. Like, uh, what that dog will never, <laughs> it's not like, it's, it's not like he's not respecting you, but it, it, it's, it's being trained that like this kind of behavior is okay and like you have to now put up with that you have to put up with piss and shit all over, all over the place all in your life and that's what that's what you're gonna get in your dating life is like a whole bunch of like piss and shit <laughs> i mean yeah like i think that i think that some people might be like yo that's, that's fucked up you know people are not dogs but you think of, if you think about it but that analogy definitely applies like you or think about think about your your own business and you have an employee and they're the best fucking employee ever like they care about the business they work really hard they never slack off but so say you start rewarding them for coming in late like they get a bonus if they come in late they get a bonus if they do less work even if they they want to do good work but they're like being rewarded for the opposite so it just like creates that like okay like they're just not going to work as hard versus if you take that person who's already good and you reward them working hard reward them like showing up on time you're going to get even more out of them like so it's it's, it's it, like it just humans are gen- like biologically wired to respond to incentives whether good or bad you know it's it, it it sounds kind of bad but that's just the way it is like even like your closest friends like you can't like if you know, even, like any friendship you have someone who occasionally does something that you don't like and like it doesn't mean you have to end the friendship doesn't mean you have to like yell at them but you have you have to be able to express your boundaries you have to be able to not reward that behavior like your friend forgets to pick you up from work or something like that you can't be like yo bro let me take you out for beers like you have to be like dude that wasn't cool like <laughs> like you cannot incentivize like behavior that is not good but yeah i do agree with that like i see i do see a lot of guys doing that though when it comes to like they would never do that in other aspects of their life but they do that when it comes to women like the woman will like treat them like shit and they'll like try to overcompensate by like rewarding them like giving her like oh i bought you a gift honey like and, and, and it doesn't even need to be like like an actual reward like just by virtue of not calling them out you're 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 showing that like nothing is wrong here even though it is yeah right? like like guys will like try to pretend like nothing happened like the chick will be a huge bitch and they just try to like play it off like everything's fine rather than calling her out because when you call her out 
it gets it can turn into confrontational, which is not comfortable. Or or maybe or maybe she'll get mad at you because you called her out and you don't want to make her mad. That's like the worst when dude when dudes are like full like pussy whipped, and the and the chick like gets mad at them for like n- not being okay with her bullshit. <laughs> Yeah, I yeah. just have a quick example. Uh, I'm not going to say his name for obvious reasons. But this is like a good buddy of mine. I recently saw him uh, a few weeks ago. We're catching up, and he was telling me he, uh, he was in a relationship for a bit. And I was like, "Yo, how's it going?" He's like, "Oh, she she's bad. You know, she keeps hitting me." I was like, "What?" Like, yeah, she like punched me in the face a few days ago. <laughs> I was like, "Are you kidding me?" Like, like, why? I oh, know she's done that a bit. Like. I'm like, are you kidding me? Like, I've never been punched in the face by a woman. Like, I don't think it will ever happen. But if it does happen, it certainly won't happen a second time because we will never hang out again. Like, but like, just like letting that slide, like, yeah, you know, but like, she's hot. Like, that's, that is not a valid excuse. <laughs> and if the, if my buddy who's watching this recognizes this, like, you know, like, oh shit, you're talking about me. Like, yeah, but hopefully it's like a little bit of a wake up call for them. Like, you, you could not possibly put up with that just because the girl's hot. Like, <laughs> stealing, punch, like, physically assaulting. Like, no way. I don't care if the girl's, like, Mia Khalifa or something like that, like, my 10. Like, there's no way I'm going to put up with that. Like, fuck that shit. Like, so I think I think having – and as a, as a result of not putting up with it, the girl is not going to misbehave or – I don't want to say misbehave because that sounds kind of, like, demeaning. But, like, the girl's not going to, like <laughs> – I don't know, like do shit like that in the first place because she knows that, okay, like if I do that, this guy will break up with me or he won't put up with it. Thus, I should not behave like that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think I think we went for a while. Um, yeah, two I hours. Any, what's up? Two hours. Yeah, wow. Uh, I guess let's end it off. Uh, yeah, I went way longer than I thought. Let's end it off by like like giving like I know, a quick bit of practical advice. Like what do you think that – uh, we kind of touched on this a bit. What do you think a guy who's watching this, say they're either in my group or your group, you know, they, they want to learn, they, they follow our content, so they're not, they don't have, they, they already have the correct information, but what do they, what, what should they do? Like a few quick things that they should do to maximize their results, you know, ASAP. Okay. So you want to add, like, we'll start, start the, like, section again. <clears throat> Fuck, hold on, let me get a glass of water, hold on. Uh-huh. <coughs> And I'm going to fucking go pass out. I got to be up early in the morning to go to my fucking group thing. <laughs> All right. So, yeah, just ask me, like, uh, what's some practical things? Yeah, what are, pra- what are a few, few, I know there's a lot of stuff, but what are a few easy practical things a guy who's, like, either following me or you can do, like, today to, like, increase their results? Like, something, something fairly straightforward that will pay off pretty quickly. Um... Buy our products. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Aside from that, I would say I look at game in like three big sections. So you have lead acquisition, which is doing night game, which is bars and clubs, day game, which is street smalls and cafes, online game, Tinder, Bumble, whatever other online platforms you use. Um, mainly those three. So you get phone numbers from those by running those properly and then the next piece is your texting and your ability to set up dates and then the third big that's lead management and the third thing is lead closing which is going on your dates or having dates straight to the house and then how do you run your date or what do you do back at the house and how do you close so really take a take a inspection on where you're at with how many leads are you getting from the top sources i don't really do day game So see how many phone numbers you can get in a week. Like try like here here's like a little homework assignment. Shoot for forty phone numbers in a week. It sounds gonna sound like an incredible amount to most guys. If you go out, let's say most guys can do at least Friday, Saturday. Let's say you're out Friday and Saturday. A lot of the bars in the US close at two. Go out from ten to two and go for one phone number every half hour. That's two phone numbers an hour. That's gonna give you eight phone numbers. Friday, eight phone numbers on a Saturday. Okay, you go out Thursday as well. I got 24. 
if you um, swipe Tinder and Bumble, how often do you recommend they swipe Tinder and Bumble per day, like an hour, half hour? No, I don't even think it needs to be that much. I think that because Tinder will put all the um, the the girls who already like you to the top of the list. So I think that just I don't know, maybe like 30, 40 swipes um, in the morning, in the evening. Like if you want to be super optimal about it, but even once a day will be sufficient. What do you, like, what do you think is a good goal amount for like a newer guy to get for matches on Tinder and Bumble per week, like combined? It, it really depends on where they live and their sexual market value and how good their profile is. But let's say like a guy who lives in like average U.S. city, average looks. I think that if you can get like average maybe five matches a day, you're on the right track. Like five attractive matches. Uh, obviously, there's much more room to grow for that. But you, you know, if you're getting like one like one match a week, that's you're on the wrong track. Like it's got to be more like several matches every single day. And I think that a big thing that this kind of goes back to what you were saying, like just increase the volume. Like I think pretty much 98% of guys could benefit from increasing the number of leads that they have. Meaning like yeah. they might be on Tinder, but they're not on all the other apps. Like get Bumble, get Hinge. Like just increase the amount of volume you have coming in. And like a lot of problems will start to almost take care of themselves. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Volume is king. But but going for going out to that 40, exa- 40 leads example, 40 phone numbers in a week. If you do eight phone numbers, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, that's 24. Maybe you get another 10 from Tinder, Bumble, Hinge. Now you're up to 34. You throw in a few daytime approaches or whatever, maybe a few extra night game approaches, do whatever, maybe more online, do whatever you need to, to get to the 40, then try to get 10% of those out on dates okay, with your shitty texting. <laughs> for those of you guys, <laughs> for those of you guys watching, I assume your texting isn't that good. Try to get four of those girls out on dates. That's 10%. Okay. And then out of those four dates, try to close half. That will give you two lays in a week and if you can do that on average every week 52 weeks times two is 104 now we've just brought you to 100 lays in a year just by working more volume and then if you, yeah if they learn how to do it each stage properly how to acquire the leads the strongest how to text the strongest how to run their dates and close the strongest now you can see how it's possible to bang 245 in a year I think something you've said a lot in the past, which I definitely agree with, is that a lot of guys, when they go out, they don't value, it's, it's all or nothing. It's either I pull this girl or, and if I don't, like we part ways, like we never met. Like I would think a lot of guys don't realize the value of like getting a girl's phone number. Yeah. Uh, like it's just, it's either, it's either, uh, you know, this chick, she was with friends, you know, so I couldn't pull her, so whatever. It wasn't worth it. Like, well, you, know, you were making out for her, I didn't get her phone number. Like, she might be down hanging out another night, most likely is. I think that's a big handicap that guys have. And I think that once you can shift from thinking it's all or nothing to like, okay, this girl has you know, a good situation, I could pull her versus like, oh, you know, she likes me, we have a good connection, but she's with a bunch of friends, I'm not gonna pull her. So, you know, I'm gonna get her phone number and then take her out on a date. Like, I do think definitely for me, most of my results come from like, if we take a on aside, like day game and night game, it's not same night pulls. It's like getting a girl's phone number, get them out, and then, um, sleeping with her then not like right away i mean that does happen but it's yeah not, i was stressed in my videos that guys should emphasize dates over polls because a night game poll there's so much work that has to go into it and it you're going to be meeting 10 to 20 girls a night you can only pull one so the majority of the girls you talk to are going to be needed to be closed the vast majority are going to need to be closed at a later date almost 100 percent of them so the focus really should be on setting up dates and knocking them down. And you have such a, a high advantage on a date because you have the girl one-on-one. There's no cop locks. She's right near your house. She presumably has time after. There's no distractions from the club. You can build the connection and the, and the sexual uh, sexuality and that hour that you have together. There's, there's just so much stacked in your favor. Yeah, I, I definitely agree with that. You know for a fact she likes you because she's not faking. She met up with you outside of like the venue, like 100%. Like the girl is interested in you at some level. That's like a huge yeah. advantage in of itself. Yeah, I definitely yeah, so, agree Yeah, so like, the biggest practical takeaways are um, do more volume, shoot for that 40 leads a week, work your phone numbers, don't just let them sit there and try to get them out on dates. Um, Make your online game better, obviously, by getting professional pictures, following Alex's advice, and then 
make sure you're sexual. Make sure you're being physical and incorporating verbal sexual innuendos because that's the other big problem that guys have is keeping things too platonic. Yeah. Also, also, I'll add phone number. Phone numbers over Instagram. I see this a lot. Like everyone's just like, because it's easier. Like girls will be like, "Oh, take my Instagram." Guys will jump on that. Like when a girl says, "Take my Instagram," I'll be like, "Yeah, I don't use mine that much. Let me get your number." That's like, right. Yeah. Yeah. It's 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 so it, it's so much more probable if you get the chick's number than her Instagram, which is so much easier for her to. She's getting DM by a hundred guys a day. Like if she's a hot girl, like it's much easier for her to ignore that. Versus like, you know, her phone number, I'm assuming she doesn't give her phone number to a hundred guys a day. Maybe she does, but ideally she does not. So it's like, you know, just a number will always trump or vast majority of the time will trump Instagram. You can do, if you feel like it was a quick lead and the girl has no, like you didn't establish, maybe she's attracted to you, but you didn't establish enough comfort. Then you could do both. You can say like, if you have a good Instagram, like, yeah, let me get your number and then be like, oh, so I'll add you on Instagram. Like you can do both. Yeah, I don't, so, I don't do any so, fucking Instagram game. Or Instagram closing. Like I, I have zero. Like to this day, I have zero closes on Snapchat because I've never even like had it installed. I, I've had it like a couple times briefly, but I've never gotten a close off it, and I've never gotten a close off Instagram either. Mm. And I'm at I'm at eleven hundred and thirty eight girls. And day game is probably like under fifty. I would say probably maybe even lower. It's it's in my first four hundred were night, but I made a big shift around four hundred lays. To incorporate online. At yeah. first, at first, I thought online was cheating. <laughs> I think I think some dudes think that, but I think it's a it's a really silly mindset because yeah, 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 at the end of the day, it's a woman. Hot chicks. Yeah. yeah, I can work leads in much higher quantity and, and much quicker and more effectively, and being versatile by working them all day long from my phone through online sources. I mean, there's, there's certain advantages and disadvantages to online, but one of the big advantages is that the girl has already found you. Like, you're her type. She swiped right on you versus, like, you approach a girl at a bar, you just might not be her type. Like, you, you your game might be on point. You might be a decent-looking guy, but she's into, I don't know, whatever, like, bodybuilders or she's into, like, skinny nerds, and you're just not her type. You know, you, you never know that. Like, there's certain versus online, like, you're her type. Like, that, that threshold has been met. Um, yeah, I feel like we, we could ramble on and on about this, but um, let's end it off by saying for guys who, you know, they, they want to follow you, what, what's the best way they can, like, learn more about your uh, method and, you know, follow your content? Um, my YouTube is John Anthony Lifestyle. Um, that's the main place. I have lots of really good videos on there. I had to hide all my hidden camera infield footage due to all the mass hysteria of the pickup channels being removed. Um, yeah. Go to John Anthony Lifestyle uh, YouTube. For those of you that are following, or for those of you that are watching this on my channel, you want to give your channel info? You're the, yeah, only, you're the only featured, you've been the only featured channel that I've ever recommended because everyone else has shit advice. <laughs> Thank you kindly, sir. Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll link it in the description, but um, my YouTube channel, you know, just search Playing With Fire, or if you search a lot of Tinder stuff, we'll rank pretty highly for that. Um, we also go to forums.playingfire.com where basically I help every single person who has questions uh, for free. Uh, and if you want to check out my product, it's playingfire.com. You can go to online dating blueprint where I literally walk you through every single thing A to Z on what you need to do to start seeing results online and much, much more. Um, and uh, are you still doing boot camps or are you taking a break from that? Um. I have I have interests all the time, but I'm mostly I'm looking into just having coaches run them for me. So I have coaches in different continents, and we're scaling up with paid traffic now. So it's going to be mostly well, yeah, it's going to be mostly other guys running them. But I'm going to also be doing an eight week mentorship program that we're rolling out, and that's going to be like eight weeks of digital content, and then group coaching calls where guys are I'm able to answer their Q and A and stuff like that, but if guys are interested in checking out my system, it's ultimate seduction system.com and sex lead machine.com. <laughs> and for your, for your, for your boot camps, like these are all guys that I know you've talked to me about. Like, these are all guys who you personally can vouch for. So it's not like just like some random like shithead running the boot camp. Oh, for camps. the instructors? Like, yeah, yeah. It's legit. Yeah, for the instructors, um, it's guys that have been with at least 300 girls. Um, that's like the first minimum criteria and they have to be really good at teaching and really good at 
game themselves and also really passionate about game. Those are, are really passionate about game. Those are like the three big criteria. Oh, and the fourth thing is they have to have trained with me personally, and they're like all teaching my system. But I, I am going to be teaching some personally, like by request. Like I have some guys where I'm going to I'm organizing them together to do a a program. But we're we're really trying to scale up big, and me going around teaching individual programs isn't going to be. There's only one of me. Yeah, yeah, I agree with that. All these girls. Like the same reason I stopped doing or significantly minimized doing like one on one uh, coaching, like for Tinder. There's only so many people I can reach doing one on one. Like that's why I had to like create the you know the online dating blueprint, like or create videos. It's just like you reach a lot more people. Like you can't really scale up if you're trading your time directly for you know like to help one person. As good as it is for that person, it's just like you can only reach so many people then. Yep. Yeah. All right, awesome, man. I think I think. Cool. Yeah, we'll put in the description our, our links. And my, my email is johnanthonylifestyle at gmail.com. What is your email? Um, I mean, I don't, I never, re, oh, that would be like a shitty way to contact me. The best way to contact me <laughs> would be to go, uh, because I have my personal email, like some people have it, but I don't get like bombarded. The best way to reach me would be <laughs> going form stopplayingfire.com. And then I'm, you know, you can just PM me directly on there. Like I have my profile on there where you can post and I answer every single person. As long as some days it may take me, I go through every single message, everything, every single comment. So that's that's the best way to reach me, or on YouTube, or uh, I guess last case resort would be Instagram, but forums is preferred. I don't use Instagram. What's your cell number? <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> I, I was watching the you know the Eric Andre show. He like fucks. It's like one of my favorite shows. He like fucks with these celebrity guests, and he had Seth Rogen on the show. They like don't know what they're walking into, and he's like, "Hey Seth, uh, what's your cell number?" And Seth's like, and Seth, and Seth's like, I'm not saying that. And he's like, oh, it's fine. We're just gonna put it at the bottom of the screen. And they, they put his real cell number like on the broadcast. It was like on Adult Swim on Comedy Central. And uh, yeah, he had to change his number. I thought that was pretty hilarious. Yeah, well, like, if you're if you're Seth Rogen, you get bombarded with text. <laughs> just bombarded. He put Jack Jack Black on a lie detector test, and it, it was like pretty hardcore shocking. And then he's like. Jack, what's your home address? And he's like, "Come on, that's not fair." He's and they're like, Come, "What's your home address? Tell the truth." <laughs> I just shocked the shit out of him because he wouldn't say it. Hmm. Word, awesome. Uh, all right, awesome man. So yeah, I think uh, I think we got a lot of good stuff here. Um, yeah, on, thank you everyone for tuning in. Touch a lot, shit. Yeah, thank you guys for tuning in. Uh, this is a little bit different than the usual videos that I do, which are more like 15, 20 minutes. But I think there's a lot of value in this one. Um, I try to like deep dive as much as possible while like making it relatable to you know the average person watching this. Nice. Yeah, I'll release this in, in sections. So thank you guys. Take care. Thank you guys. All right. Cheers.